This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Hey guys, it's Max, and in this video, we're gonna be finding out if the new 2020 iMac is the perfect computer to edit footage from the Canon R5 and also the A7S III. If you guys saw my first video where I compared my Mac Pro, I compared the best MacBook Pro and a super high-end, crazy Quadro Windows laptop, all of those struggled editing the 422 10-bit HEVC footage from the Canon R5. And with this new computer coming out using 10th generation processors, multiple people told me that is finally gonna have the special chip in order to decode it. So we're gonna find out if that works in Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. And we'll also see how the Sony footage edits compared to the Canon footage. And I'm also gonna give you guys some tips on transcoding and on buying one of these if you wanna buy an iMac. Let's go ahead and get started here in Final Cut Pro. The first clip that I have playing here is using 8-bit footage. So if you're not using the log or the HDR mode. As you guys can see, we are having no issues here. Uh, this is 4K HQ, so it's oversampled. Let's grab one of those log clips. And those log clips are the ones that are difficult that we had a really hard time, even harder than 8K RAW. Play it back. So far, actually, it's looking pretty smooth. Wow, okay. This is 4K and this is the 10-bit log mode. This is not the 8-bit one. And look at that. Nice. All right, so we have, this is the latest version of Final Cut. Looks like it's using mostly the graphics card. And if you guys remember before, our CPU was pretty much maxed out trying to decode this. And my Mac Pro wasn't playing it back. And as you guys can see, we are set to better quality. Let's go ahead and check the previous project I tested in my last video, which is this one right here. Starting out smooth, and I'm seeing some dropped frames. Now, does that look better than what my Mac Pro did? It looks a little bit smoother, but it's not perfectly smooth, which is interesting. Whereas the clip that I shot myself, which is also in log mode, I had to keep the dynamic range inside this building. This is much, much smoother. Now, this is IPB. I shot 10-bit log in IPB because I wanted the smaller file size, whereas the previous clip right here is all I. And all I, typically, that would be easier to edit on a system, but in this case, it doesn't really look like it is. Look, it's starting to stutter up, and we're getting a lot of skips, where this is doing a much better job. Let's grab one of these clips from the A7S III. This is also 10-bit 422. Let's play it back. Ah, oh, gosh. Okay, so that is playing back better than my Mac Pro. No joke. Um, this is when I first got the A7S III, and I shot everything in 10-bit 422 HEVC. And then later, I ended up switching back, or switching to the 420. Here's a 422 4K120, and the Sony actually allows you to play it back in real time. I don't think it's gonna pull this. Yep, you guys see that. It is struggling for the 422, but thankfully, unlike the Canon, I could just switch to 420, which is excellent for grading, just like the S1H, the Fuji. Look how smooth that's playing back on this system. This is 4K, 120 frames per second, real time, with audio. And the system is at 19% CPU or GPU and 3% CPU. Wow, so that is the one you want to use. So it looks like for Final Cut with this new system, it is smoother than my Mac Pro. Still not perfect if you want the All Eye, but I would say don't shoot the All Eye because this is that 422 10-bit log, and it is doing pretty dang good. Now, before we test out Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, let me give a shout out to a sponsor of this video, Storyblocks. Have you ever been working on a video project and you're missing just that extra B-roll clip, whether it's a drone shot, a time lapse, or something else to top off your video? Well, Storyblocks is a library of over 1 million assets, including HD and 4K footage, music and images, and even After Effects templates and motion backgrounds. New media is regularly added and everything is royalty free for one low subscription price. 
Go to storyblocks.com slash max to learn more. And the next time you're in a bind or just editing, you feel your project could use just a little extra something, you'll have access to a huge stock library at a fraction of the cost. Take your video to the next level with Storyblocks. Next, let's take a look at Premiere Pro. And I have to say I'm the least hopeful for this program, but I just updated it. And I have full resolution enabled there. So this is 4K. And you know, <laughs> why did it say you have the least hope? It's because I did. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, the CPU is at 76%, 70% right there. GPU is at 13. The GPU is being used to decode, but I think I might have just sealed the deal and I might, I think not might anymore. And it's, I think now it's turned into for sure selling my Mac Pro because my Mac Pro wasn't doing this. I need to do more tests. If you guys wanna know how it compares this system to my Mac Pro, I will have a direct comparison. Make sure you guys are subscribed and you guys have notifications enabled. There I'll take a look at ProRes footage, Blackmagic RAW, uh, a lot more codecs. That is good. Let's try the 4K60. And this is at half res. Okay, so, oh, it's, yeah, the CPU can't keep up. This is at half, at full. I mean, there's no way. It's just the CPU power isn't enough there. But it went fine for a little bit there. So it looks like 4K60, you'll still need to do, you might still need to do some proxies. And I have some good news on proxies here in a little bit. Let me go ahead and import my footage as well. I know it's not gonna have any issues with this 8-bit clip. Um, but let's see the CPU usage, about 39%. Uh, so it's having a much easier time. And then for my personal IPB, and it's having an even easier time with this IPB. So my suggestion, don't think you're gonna get better playback with all eye. That's what most people try to use all eye for. This IPB is definitely smoother. Let's try the footage from the Sony. We have another 422 clip right here. No issues having an easier time than the Canon. Let's try the 120. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> the CPU is at 99%. It's playing back almost perfectly. 422, 10-bit from the Sony. So it looks like the Sony footage is a lot easier to edit because we couldn't do 4K 60, 10-bit 422 from the, the EOS R5, but 4K 120 on this machine maxing out that CPU is actually playing back. And then of course, if we have 4K 120, and that's in real time, that's not pre-slowed down. No issues with the 4K 120 full resolution with this iMac. This has a 5700 XT graphics, a 16 gig, real time, perfect playback. Good job, Adobe, and good job, Premiere Pro. So with the R5, you could do 4K 30, especially IPB, but all I as well, 60, you're still gonna struggle with but it seems like it's doing better than my Mac Pro. Now let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve. This is 16.2.6, 4K timeline, and we're getting a little bit of choppiness right there. No, come on. There you go, it smoothed out. Our CPU's at 76%. Starting to have a little bit of easier time. Let's try that again. Perfectly smooth, wow. All right, yeah, I definitely have more testing to do, and this is the all eye. So Final Cut right now is actually doing the worst. I also wanna test out that IPB clip. This is 422 10-bit log, and once again, yeah, it's playing back much easier, less CPU usage, perfectly smooth, which is fantastic. That is great news. Also, let's take a look at some Sony footage here. This is 422 10-bit HVC as well. Um, it's playing back great, easier than from the EOS R5, no issues. And let's try out uh, 4K 120. This is 420, perfect. This is the 420 on the Sony. I wish we had that option on the R5. 4K 60, that is great. And then if you do 422, 4K 120, you're still gonna run into issues. It's just too many clips there with that compression. So instead, on the Sony, go 420, it plays back, or on the Canon, it's, as I showed you guys, it's pre-slowed down, and it was playing back. So what did we learn? First off, the Sony clips, even the 422 10-bit HEVC, they play back easier than R5s. You also have the 420, which it's amazing. 
I would use that, it's better in low light. We also learned a couple things, and I said that there's a positive and a negative. The positive is, if you're going to transcode your footage, this new iMac, it can decode, it can transcode 30 minutes of 4K30 all I 422 in 37 minutes. My Mac Pro took 30, so it's actually almost as good for much less money, and you have the display built in, which is awesome. Uh, now, along with that, the 8-core model, not the 10-core that costs $400 more, that one actually takes the exact same time to transcode. Personally, I would buy the 8-core and get this new 5700 XT 16-gigabyte graphics card. It is doing a fantastic job, as you guys saw. We're not seeing much differences. I'll have more detail upcoming, and check out on Mac Tech. We'll have a good comparison. But this iMac, the good news is, it plays this back better than my Mac Pro, transcodes almost as quick as my Mac Pro. It is a great value for video editors. Now, the bad news is, when we mentioned before that um, the, it has a special decoding chip for this footage, and we wanted to test it out, that's actually not the case. Intel did not put the latest graphics into the integrated um, graphics with a CPU in here. The only Apple computer that has that, there's almost no computers in general, is a 13-inch MacBook Pro, the $1,800 spec. I spent a few hours testing that that has the latest integrated graphics there. No software supports it at all. This one doesn't have that built in, but with this new graphics card, the CPUs, it's doing a great job playing this back better than my Mac Pro. There you guys have it. Check out the links down below. If you guys need some stock footage for a great price, check out Storyblocks. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.